Welcome to AG Photographic. Um, I wanted to make a quick video to just run through, and hopefully it won't be too long, but it's to run through the C-type silver halide print media that we offer, the different types of papers. Uh, because often people don't have a very good idea about uh, you know, what they're maybe going to look like. Um, we do have a swatch book that we'll send out, £1.90, including postage, if you want to have a look. Um, and if you think you might need prints and you want to have a look at the, the papers first in the flesh. But this should give you a good idea, uh, just run through. Now firstly, I'll say C-type print, uh, it, it can either be 100% analog, you can, you, know, you can expose these papers in the dark room under the enlarger, and it, 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 you make it in completely the traditional way. 99.9% .9 of the prints we make here, uh, and, uh, which are made these days on this paper, are exposed digitally, there are continuous tone prints exposed with lasers, uh, and, but then processed in traditional chemistry. And the, the, I, I always like sort of a blend of, of traditional and digital. I think you know you get the best of both worlds. And so what you get is a, a genuine wet processed continuous tone print, uh, which has been uh, can, can come from a digital file or it can come from film. Uh, when we print from the film, we'll scan it to a very high quality first. And there's some very, very high quality scanners here. And uh, you can achieve spectacular results. Uh, it does come down to the scan with the film. But any, all the prices we give for print from film include, uh, uh, obviously, a scan first to the requisite quality. And for the really bigger files, for the bigger prints, we would scan on the Hasselblad Flextite on the smaller down to, you know, probably down to 16 by 20 um, and below that, we scan on the Noritsu, uh, both of which are fantastic scanners, uh, but, but for really big stuff, the Flextite X5 is, 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 you know, is ideal. So the first uh, paper is the most popular one that we, we have, and, and it, we print more on this than anything else. It's the Fuji Color Professional Type DP2, um, which has a good weight to it, and this is the top of the range of the, of the Fuji range of of of, of color papers. Um, they they do. There's quite a number of them, and it's a little bit complicated. And I won't go into it in this in, in this video, but it's got a good weight to it. And the first one, the most popular one, is the matte version. Now the matte has a sheen to it, it's not a dead mat. And you'll be able to see that, hopefully, in this. If I move this around, you'll be able to see that there is a certain amount of sheen to it. Um, so it's got a very smooth surface. There's basically no texture to it, or virtually no texture at all. And that's how it differs to a luster. And the luster, in our view, is, is, is a, is a it's nowhere near as nice, to the point where we don't actually offer it and we never get asked for it. But it is popular, I know it's popular in the social sort of wedding sort of side of things, but then saying that, um, so is the mat. But the mat seems to be what people want and that seems to be the most popular uh, paper that we, we offer. Um, the, lust, the, the difference with the luster, luster just has a more of a surface texture to it. Um, and a bit more sheen. So the, the, the mat is you know, a very popular choice. We, we offer this everything from the smallest print right up to the largest 50 inch wide by 110 inches, uh, uh, 120 inches long uh, if you really wanted it that big. Uh, that's 10 foot, of course. Um, so very, very, very popular and, and good value and, and um, you know, we can very high quality results on it. The next one, and the next most popular, is the standard gloss in the Type DP2 Fuji Color Professional. And again, it's the same base, same weight as the, as the Fuji, as, sorry, as the, as the matte, uh, but obviously has a gloss surface. It's a standard, it's just a classic gloss surface. And again, you'll be able to see uh, that this gloss surface, it, 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 it's a nice, smooth, it's a virtually no texture at all. There is a very, very slight texture there, but it, it's, and you'll see we're another media a bit later on which has zero texture. Uh, but this one, it has ever so slight, but it's a standard gloss surface. And 
it, it's fallen out of favour a bit in recent years. People tend to prefer matte things. They don't like glossy things. But it does have a place. Uh, I just printed a slide, actually, on gloss, and I think it really suits. It depends on the image. Um, th this was taken from a Kodachrome slide. This dates from 1963, and we've just printed this. And that's on the gloss, you can see. And it, it, um, it, I think it suits that image. It's, it, you get more contrast with the gloss. And generally, as the, as the paper gets matter, you get less contrast. Um, and I think it's super. Uh, moving on, still in the DP2 range, is the silk surface. And the silk, I think we're the only processing lab in Britain offering silk. I'm not, I, I, I don't think anybody else buys it, uh, or they certainly don't offer it sort of on the open market, so, so to speak. But silk was popular in the 1970s, and it has a sort of dimpled surface which you can feel. The, the great thing about it is it's incredibly good handling. It, it's, it's very, very good for books. Uh, we don't make books here, but we have a customer who makes books. We print for him, and he makes wedding books. And the great thing is you can turn these pages, and it doesn't pick up fingerprints, which you would get on the gloss and on the mat, uh, you know, as you'd expect. But the silk is it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, obviously, if you put your hand in some uh, tomato ketchup, you, know, you would still get fingerprints. But just under normal usage, uh, you don't get the fingerprints. And, or if you have it printed in small prints, it looks sort of retro, which is why some people order it. So it's not, it's not as popular as the gloss on the map, but it, it, it does have a following. And since we started offering it a couple of years ago, um, not even be three years ago now, it, it has, it has has a good following. Um, the next paper is a new paper from Fujifilm. Well, it's newish, about a year, 18 months or so. And this is what they call uh, Type H Velvet. Weighty base to it, it's got a good weight. I think it's slightly better than the DP2. It's slightly more robust. It's a very flat matte surface. And this hasn't ever really been done in a color silver halide paper before. Um, and what it does is it means that when people might, customers might have originally opted for a, a flat, matte, cotton rag, inkjet, G-clay product, um, this gives a silver halide alternative to that with a similar surface. And you'll be able to see it's, it's there's a very, very low sheen. Um, it's very flat, it's very gentle. It, it's, suits an image like this, which is sort of gentle and it's misty and, and, and it wouldn't suit everything. Uh, I don't think it would suit that. I think I would put wrong on it. Uh, but it, it is good. It's, and despite the fact it's very matte, it, it's actually, you'd think it would, you know, it'd scratch easily, but it's very robust. And one of the problems with fine art inkjet media is it's just, you, you think about it and there's a mark on it. Uh, it it's the most awkward, paper to handle and it's very very easily damaged. This stuff is, is brilliant, you know, you can print something on this and give it to a framer and you'll, you know, you've got a far better chance of them not uh, causing any damage to it while it's with them, uh, which does happen. Uh, obviously a lot of framers are excellent and they won't damage a print, but it's, it can happen, it's, it can happen by accident and uh, the great thing about it is it's very robust. Uh, in fact, all of these papers are much, much more robust than inkjet. Uh, inkjet a lot of inkjet stuff is, 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 you know, particularly the fine art, expensive stuff, is, is, tends to be, you know, marked very easily. This is a black and white image on the velvet, just to give an example of that. Um, and it's, uh, I think it prints black and white well. The critical thing with black and white is balancing the paper and calibrating the paper. Uh, and that's, that's the way it, it, it really... Uh, achieves the best because it is a color paper, of course, but that's the way it achieves uh, you know really high quality black and white images. Um, the next one has been around for years, um, and nobody's people have tried to copy it. Even Fujifilm has tried to copy it in in their own paper uh, version of it. Uh, they've tried to people have tried to copy it with inkjet media, and, and really nobody's ever managed to copy it in anything other than than than, than the original and. That is the Kodak Metallic. Now it's a bit of an unusual paper. Again, it doesn't suit every image. Uh, this is an image we think it suits well. Um, it, it tends to blow highlights out. 
quite easily. You know, gentle clouds and things like that. I mean, this again, I'm not sure that would work. Um, it, but this sort of a thing, it's got some punch to it and, and it, it does work. And, and they call it metallic because, and I don't know whether this is possible on the, to see on the video, but it does have a sort of silvery uh, base colour to it. Uh, and oddly, well, it might, it's not oddly, I suppose, it does look quite good for metal things cars, equipment, machinery, that sort of stuff, it, you know, can look very effective. Um, it, but it's, it's a, uh, it, you know, it's been around for years, and it is very, it's very popular with, with, with certain customers. Um, we've got a customer who photographs fans, and, and they have pretty much everything printed on it. Um, we then move on to uh, another quite unique paper, um, and this is by Fujifilm, and this is a product called Fuji Flex. And it's actually technically not a paper because the base is polyester, and it has ultra gloss finish. It's, I mean, it's literally like gloss, and it, it looks very much for anybody who's familiar with the original. Sorry, there's a compressor going on. But I'll stop in a minute. Uh, anyone who's familiar with the original um, Ilford Cedar Pro, uh, that was also on a polyester base, or the majority of it. I think they did do a paper one at one point, but certainly in the latter years, before it was discontinued, it was only on a polyester base, and it came with this ultra gloss in it, and it does look awfully, I mean, it does look awfully like Cedar Pro. Um, again, it suits this image, I think. Um, it, it, it's just, it's just a fantastic product. It doesn't mount desperately well, but then it kind of doesn't, it, it almost doesn't need to. It, it, it does need to be sort of supported when it's in a frame, but it's, um, it's a fantastic product and it is, it is expensive um, because it, it only comes on, uh, you know, we, we print off 30 or 50 inch rolls regardless, so it only comes, it doesn't, it's not like these papers which come off much smaller rolls, so we can print uh, more efficiently on them. So there's, and it's an expensive material as well, so there's, there's, there's quite a lot of cost of printing on it, but, you know, for a special image, um, it, it's, it's really, really unique. Um, there's one or two others as well, uh, which I don't have here at the moment, um, but there's one which is very similar to the Velda, but it has a canvas texture surface. Uh, it's quite unusual, so it means you can have a continuous tone silver halide print that looks like a canvas. Um, that does come in the swatch book. For anybody who chose to have a swatch book sent out to them, but I hope that explains it uh, a little bit. And when you need some prints, you'll know what the choices are. Thanks. <laughs>